As someone who loves travel photography, one of the biggest things that I have to deal with is when I finally take an amazing shot just to get back to my computer and think, oh, I really wish that sky just wasn't so boring. Now, of course, this is something we can't control when you're out shooting. The weather is what the weather is, but that's all right because I'm Sean and this is Photoshop Icebreakers where we're gonna be learning the ins and outs of Photoshop's super powerful sky replacement tool where we can actually completely rework and transform our sky to create something a lot more interesting. All right, so we're gonna jump right into Photoshop here. Now, in the last video, I showed you guys how to clean up this beach using Photoshop's Content Aware Fill tool. And in this one, we're gonna be taking it a step further and replacing the sky so that we got something a little more interesting. Because in my opinion, this is very plain and dull and boring. So. What we're gonna do is with our image open in Photoshop, we're gonna come up to edit, sky replacement. Now this feature is amazing. So give it a second here. It's just going to load in our sky and this open on my other screen. So we're gonna have this dialog box here that basically has the sky image that's going to be replacing as well as all these parameters. So first we're gonna hit this drop down. Now Photoshop does have some default skies that you can pick from or you can go and import your own skies by simply clicking this little plus icon. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using this sky image in particular. I think it looks super great with this photo. And now we're just going to discuss some of these settings and how you can kind of dial in your sky just to make it match a little bit more. So first we've got our edge shift. Now this one I think we're gonna keep on zero, but it basically just determines whether your edge starts close or farther from your horizon. So Photoshop is automatically going to mask out what it thinks your sky is and place your image there. So the edge shift just gives you a little bit more control over where it starts. So for this particular photo, I think I'm gonna start it at about negative 15. Zero is very good as well. It does a great job at detecting the edges, but sometimes it can clip onto little trees and like fringing on the edges. So I like to kind of dial that down just to add a slight fade from the actual horizon into the sky. We've now got, of course, edge fade, which does a little bit, basically takes the shift edge and uh, pushes it a little bit further. So adds a little more or a little less of a fade. For this one, I like to keep it on the default 50. We've now got our sky adjustments. So this is your brightness, temperature, and scale. So we've got our brightness, which of course just makes it brighter or darker, but I really like how this one looked at zero, maybe even a little bit. I kind of like that moody vibe. So maybe we'll just put it a little bit darker. This was taken at sunset, so this sky kind of matches that vibe. So making this a little bit darker does kind of add a little bit to that. We can of course change the temperature as well if you want your sky to appear a little bit more warm or cold. This heavily depends on the time of day that your original photo was taken on. So if this was super bright, sky was coming right, or the sun was coming right down, then I would probably push it into the blues. But since this was a little bit more of a sunset photo, we can kind of push that towards the yellows and warm our image up just a little bit to match those tones. Next, we have scale. This does exactly what it says it does. We can determine the size of our sky. Now for this particular sky, um, I'm just gonna maybe punch up this cloud just a little bit, but I'm not gonna be moving it too far from the regular scale of 100 because I thought that looked awesome. Now really quick, forgot to mention this first, you can also click and drag your sky into place if you would like to move it around as well. We've also got the flip option, which flips our sky, but I do like it looking just like this. I think it's great having the uh, brightest part of the image kind of peeking over the darkest area of the uh, cliff here. So next we've got our foreground adjustments. So lighting mode set to multiply. This is just multiply and screen. I keep it on multiply. It works perfectly. Foreground lighting. This just allows us to determine a little bit of the kind of the lighting that Photoshop puts into here. I'll show you a little bit in detail kind of what layer it's adjusting in a, actually I think I can't, nope. So once you actually hit okay, it creates a little layer stack here so you can kind of see exactly what's what was adjusted. And uh, this one here is adjusting the kind of fog layer that it creates. So we're just going to move that back to 64. Edge lighting, uh, we can kind of play around with this as well. Basically just makes the edges of it a little darker or a little brighter. Personally, I don't adjust these settings all too much. I think that Photoshop's default, what it gets spits out when you hit the tool initially 
is perfect, but you can of course come in here and fine tune this just to try and make it match just that much more. And uh, color adjustment, we can play with this as well, but I don't think it's going to be doing much. No, we're just gonna leave that at the default. I uh, don't even remember what the default was, but it doesn't look like it's doing too much. So we're just going to keep that about 35. And of course, lastly, we have our output. We're gonna hit new layers. Now, I always keep this on new layers because we want to always work in a non-destructive way. So we can kind of go in and readjust anything down the road. So we're just gonna hit okay once we're happy with all our parameters. And you'll see that Photoshop creates an awesome group with everything layered nicely. And you can of course go in and manipulate this as you please. So like I was talking about before with that fog layer, that is this one here. You've got our sky with an, a mask that you can of course adjust. You can click on it with your brush tool selected, B on the keyboard. Black is don't show, white is fully show. So if we just go hit X to change that to white, you can of course see that we can paint in our sky. Hit Control Z because we don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, you have that flexibility if you do want to take it a step further. Of course, up here, let me just drag this out a little bit for you so you can maybe see these names. We've got our sky brightness and our sky temperature. These are adjustment layers. You can click on them and further adjust them as you please. Both of these fully customizable. Um, but with that, guys, that is the end of this tutorial. Super easy and so, so powerful. I use this feature all the time with my photography, just adding a little bit of extra oomph to my skies, and I love that. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.